Example 91.5. According to a poll conducted in 2012, 85% of recent college graduates are planning to move back into their parents' home after graduation. Use the results of the survey to find the probability that among 50 randomly selected recent graduates, that at least 40 of them move back in with their parents after graduation. Okay, so this is the probability problem that we're trying to answer, and the probability we're looking for is the probability of at least 40 moving back in, right? Moving home, let's say. Moving home. Okay, so at least 40 out of 50 people who are randomly selected. Well, what does at least 40 mean? It means 40 or more, correct? So that's 40, 41, 42, 43, all the way up to 50. So if we want to work this out using binomial probability, which I believe this scenario would fit, um, it would take a lot of work. It would be a lot of calculations to do. There's no faster way to do it other than to use either software or a table. Um, but tables don't go up this high. We don't have ends of 50 on the binomial table, so we won't be able to use that um, table to help us get the answer. And if we don't have access to software, we're kind of in trouble. We won't be able to solve this simply. It'll take very long to do all the calculations by hand. So how do I know it's binomial, by the way? Well, you know, it has a fixed number of trials, right? Um, we can assume reasonably that the trials are virtually independent. And then from there, we have a constant probability of success. You know, 85% of recent college graduates are planning to move back into their parents' home after graduation, right? So we have a fixed probability of a person moving back home. And there are only two possibilities. Either the person moves home or they don't. So it fits the binomial criteria, but the problem is too hard to calculate by hand using binomial. And this is where the binomial approximation comes in. By using the normal approximation technique, so using the bell curve, in other words, to approximate the binomial probability, we can get at this answer by basically handling it like it's a bell curve problem. So what we're going to do when we do that is we're going to draw the curve. And again, what's the reason that we know to do this? Simply because the problem is unmanageable otherwise, right? Without software, this is very difficult. I want you to label a z-axis, then an x-axis. X is going to be the number of successes, right? Now think about that. If x is the number of successes, what I would want to know is what's the average number of successes? Well, we have formulas for this, right? That's given. That information is known. The number of successes should be n times p. That's the number of successes where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. So we know these values actually. The n here is 50. We're going to survey 50 people. And the p is 85%. We know that as well because we were told that 85% of the people move home. Incidentally, q then, the complement of p is 0.15. So 15% will not move home, right? 85% say they will. Now from there, with npq, we should be able to get the mean and the standard deviation, which remember is just the square root of n, p, q multiplied. So if we do that in our calculators, let's see what we come up with. What happens if we have n times p here? Well, we have 85% of 50, right? So 50 times 0.85, and of course you get the answer 42.5 there, right? So 42.5. That's your mean, and that's what should go here, because that's the average number of successes you would get out of 50 trials. All right, good, so you have the average. What about the standard deviation? Well, that's n times p, so if we just do that times q, which would be times 15%, right? Then we take the square root of that. We will end up with the answer for standard deviation. It's approximately 2.525. So approximately 2.525. I'm going to need that value in my next step, so I want to hang on to that. Okay. So we've calculated our mean, we have our standard deviation. Now, if we're treating this like a bell curve problem, we should draw the number that we're interested in on the bell curve. So this says the probability that at least 40 of them move back in home, right? At least 40. So 40 would be here, right? Somewhere to the left of 42, correct? Remember, we're talking about number of successes, and 42 is the average, 42.5. So 40 is to the left of that. And at least, remember, means that value or more, right? So we're looking for essentially the probability that the number of successes is 40 or greater. So that's our probability. Now I happen to know this one's 50%, this half of the curve. So I know the answer is over 50. The question is, what's the value from here to here? Well, that's actually easy enough to do. If we converted 40 into a z-score and looked it up on our z-chart, we would get an answer, right? That answer would be good. 
but it wouldn't be as good as it could be. So to improve the calculation, we want to use something called continuity correction. And continuity correction just simply says, hey, and if this was actually binomial, the drawing would actually look a little more like this. It would be something like a bar here where 40 is located, and then there would be a bar where 41 is located, and a bar where 42 is located, you know, so on and so forth. So you'd actually have something that looked a little more like this, you know, so on and so forth. If I wanted to find the probability of 40 or more, I'd have to take the area here, plus the area here, plus the area here, so on and so forth, add them all together, and that would be my total answer. Notice this rectangle is centered at 40, which means it actually begins over here at 39.5. It starts a little before 40, one half before 40. So if I want to improve my area here, improve my probability approximation, I should actually start at a little before 40. So instead of using 40, I'm going to use 39.5. And that's referred to as continuity correction. So you can see more about that in the concept video if you watch it. But continuity correction just allows us to improve the probability because then we pick up what we normally would be picking up if we use the binomial formula. For the binomial formula, it would actually start at 39.5 and go over, right? That's how we would find the areas. Okay, so 39.5 is what we'll convert into a z-score. And once we do that, we'll look it up and we'll be golden. Okay, so let's do that then. Our z-score will be simply the number here, 39.5 minus the mean of 42.5 over the standard deviation, which is 2.525. And then we'll get our answer. Now a little note on the continuity correction as I type in my z-score here. Just remember that you know it'll depend on what area you're looking for. If you're going to the right, you're going to start a little before. If you're going to the left from a certain point, you'll start a little after, right? So that's basically the idea. You're always going to add or subtract 0.5. It just depends on the setup of the problem. If you do the little drawing like I did with the rectangles, you should be able to easily see where you need to go, right? Like if we were going from 40 below, we would have had started up here at 40.5 so that we could collect all of the 40 rectangle, right? Okay, so now we divide by 2.525. All right, so divide by 2.525 and our z-score becomes negative 1.19. Negative 1.19. Okay, so that's our z-score. We're gonna take that z-score, put it here, negative 1.19. And now all that's left to do is to go to the table and get this area, and we'll basically be finished with the problem. So let's go to our z-score chart and find that area. All right, so in this problem, we're looking at negative 1.19. Let's find the 1.1 row then, and we'll go all the way to the last entry in that row because that's where the ninth position is, and we find out the answer to be 0 0.3830. Okay, so we found the value 0 0.3830, 0 0.3830. Okay, so that's our area, and we put them together then to add the two areas together to get the total area of the shaded region, we find ultimately our solution. So the probability that the number of successes is greater than or equal to 40 will be equal to 0 0.3830 plus 0 0.5500, which of course gives you 0 0.8830. So 88.3% is the probability that this would occur if you looked at 50 people. You'd have at least 40 of them saying they're going to move back home. So actually, the numbers are quite alarming, right? Uh, of course, this is because of the economic situation in 2012, and it also has something to do with the uh, changing uh, economy in the United States in general. So some of it is to do with the economic downturn that occurred in the past few years, and then um, more of it has to do with just the general changes in the U.S. economy. So people tend to start a little later, and they tend to use their parents' home as a launching pad a little more commonly than they did in the past, where maybe people would go out at 18 and get jobs right away, right after graduating high school. Now I want to do one more thing with you. I just want to look at the accuracy of this answer. So I wrote a calculator program in the TI-83 graphing calculator. I made my own program to do binomial probability for these types of problems. So I'm going to press my program menu and arrow down to where I've created this binome probability program. And it's going to ask me for the n, or the sample size. Well, that would be 50 here. It's going to ask me for the probability that's 0.85. And then it's asking me for the number of successes I'm interested in. So I'm going to type 40. Now remember, we want at least 40 or 40 or more. So 
if you look here, I have an option at least. It says push one, so I'll do that. And when I'm done, I get the value 0 0.8801. We got the answer 0 0.8830. So you can see how good the approximation is. It's very close, right? It's only off here by, you know, the 0.3% versus say just 0.01% off, right? So this one is very close to this number and they're both basically 88%. So this is why this method is still very powerful. You don't need software to get areas um, under this bell curve, you need just a table. And so basically you can get away with doing this approximation with just the table. Really, it's really so hard to do by hand, so it's a huge advantage. Of course, if you have a graphing calculator like I do, you could create a program of your own. But, um, you know, minus that expense of paying for software, uh, you can just use a cheap Z table and use the same logic or approach to get a pretty good answer.